Hello guys, welcome to Everything Metallurgy. Welcome to day 44 of 100 days 100 concepts. Today in this video, I'm going to explain you about dislocation multiplication or basically Frank Red uh, mechanism. Okay, so uh, I got uh, many requests to cover this actually. So yeah, today's video I'm doing this. So what is dislocation multiplication? Basically, dislocation multiplication means multiplying the number of dislocation that means increasing the number of dislocations or you can also say increasing the dislocation density itself okay so it is actually denoted by rho fine so in a given space or given volume you are trying to increase the number of dislocations that is what actually is done in dislocation multiplication now how is it done so let's say i'll just try to divide into different steps and explain you precisely okay so let's say i have a dislocation okay so let me take d d dash okay so this is the dislocation line which i have and basically i apply some shear stress tau to this particular dislocation and we know that if there is some required amount of stress if uh, I apply on a dislocation, it can actually bend and what is that dislocation? I mean, what is the uh, shear stress? The tau can be equal to GB by 2R, okay? So, R is nothing but the radius to which I am trying to bend my dislocation, okay? So, let us say I have, you know, these two points D and D dash anchored on my slip plane. That means these points actually cannot move out of the slip plane because of some obstacles. Okay. But what happens? This line that means between D and D dash, it will try to come out of the plane. That means it will actually try to bend. Okay. So these points will be the same, but it will try to form something like this. Okay. So this is the second step so this is converting into this okay so what is happening my d and d dash are same but because of the applied shear stress tau which is actually enabling my dislocation to bend or you know bulge out of my slip plane okay so here some semicircle kind of stuff is actually forming okay so because of this bulging out fine so after this actually what happens is that this loop whatever it is uh, formed will try to you know expand okay because no, the space constraint is always there, correct? So, it will try to expand in this manner in the same way, okay? So, now after this what happens? It will actually try to inhaliate. So, these loops will expand, expand, expand and you see let us say uh, some P and Q segments. So, let us say these are two different segments means what? Dislocation loops. Dislo dislocation loops means atoms right so dislocations are nothing but extra atoms which are actually present in my uh, existing crystal correct so this is what will happen so actually dislocations can inhale that means they can join up so here there will be something like this forming which is nothing but my inhalation so what happens basically is this two will be joining and these two will be joining okay so uh, directly you can see from that what happens after that is that you have a new dislocation with an expanded loop outwards something like this okay so again remember these are my dd dash only the same place okay so these are some you know five different steps uh, which you see in dislocation multiplication so what is the first step which you observed the first step is the application of shear stress itself which is actually you know uh, required such that bending of dislocation can take place. In the second uh, stage, what you are looking at is bulging of my dislocation line into a semicircle kind of thing. Okay, and third third uh, step, what happens is the loop is expanding continuously, so loop expansion is taking place. And finally, uh, uh, before uh, forming a new dislocation, there will be inhalation of these segments okay inhalation of these p and q segments so inhalation means they tend to join and they leave a new dislocation line so here in the last step new dislocation is generated with expanded loop 
okay so here what is happening there is the previous dislocation with an expanded loop and a new dislocation is generated so this is how basically the dislocation density is actually increasing so this is called as frank reed mechanism okay so this is how basically dislocation tend to multiply themselves what is the first criteria remember you always require a shear stress which is actually bending remember that should be equal to some magnitude of this particular value gb by 2r right so i hope uh, this video made the concept of dislocation multiplication clear to you so if you like this video please hit the like button and also share with many of your gate metallurgy friends and also do check out everythingmetallurgy.com to check out our best video course for you know uh, gate metallurgy as well as one of the most affordable test series for gate metallurgy thank you guys thanks for watching meet you tomorrow with one more interesting concept thank you